Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Palette and I'm back again today with a very new exciting tutorial. This is gonna be version four of my eSports uh, logo design tutorials. It's not gonna be logo design, but it's gonna be eSports style text uh, effects. So it's gonna be pretty cool and interesting. If you haven't seen my other three versions, uh, you can check them out on the channel. I've got a playlist so you can check it out. Uh, these were the old ones and uh, this is going to be a little different uh, just something or if you guys are new to Illustrator and want to learn you can definitely check it out uh, I'm using the latest version of Illustrator so you know maybe a couple of tricks that you can learn along the way so anyway without any further ado let's get started All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by going to file and clicking on new let's create a brand new document now I'm gonna choose 1920 by 1080. You can choose whatever you want, but since this is vector, size really doesn't matter, but you know, let's just keep it, you know, at a high size just in case. Okay, so let's start by creating a text. So let's go and grab the text tool and then just click and then I'm gonna call this eSports, all right? Uh, and I'm gonna keep the original one just in case for the colors and stuff, all right? So let's go ahead and pick a nice font. So I'm gonna be using this font called Kenyan Coffee. Uh, it, it was a very popular font back in the days, but I think right now uh, it's changed a bit. Um, you know, people are using different fonts, but this is still a pretty awesome font. So I'm gonna set this to bold, and uh, that should be real. Let's scale it. So you can hold down shift on your keyboard and you can scale it. And I guess that's looking pretty good. Now, let me just quickly check. Uh, so we have to manually get these kind of corner sharp points. Um, so probably I'm gonna do that with the E. Uh, only, um, yeah, I guess uh, that should be okay. So what, what, so what you wanna do first is just select the text. Once you have it pretty big, you wanna go to object and then you wanna choose expand and uh, make sure that these two are checked and click on okay. What that's going to do is that's gonna turn each of these into a single vector path. If you press control shift G, uh, you can you know select each one of these and you know manually play around with them. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down over here so you can hold on alt or option on your keyboard and then you can just scroll like so. Uh, all right. And I'm going to select A on my keyboard to get the direct selection tool or you can come here and choose the direct selection tool. I'm going to select uh, these four anchor points. As you can see, these four have been selected and I'm just going to bring them down a bit to somewhere over here, I guess. Uh, let's see how much is the difference. All right. So a little bit like so. I think that should be pretty good. And then I'm gonna select only this anchor point and then hold down shift and then move it inside like so. So, you know, we have uh, some kind of uh, a cool style, I guess. Um, yeah, I think uh, that is looking pretty good. We can actually select both of this and then just move it a little bit inside if you want, but uh, that's completely up to you. And uh, maybe a little bit outside. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, everything else you, you can you can do whatever you want you can change whatever settings you want but i'm just going to keep it like this for now pretty simple so i'm going to go ahead and select all this uh, press ctrl g or command g to group and i'm going to come over here and vertically and horizontally align it so it is in the dead center pretty good all right so the next thing we're going to do is i'm going to select this whole set and you're going to come over here and click on this which is basically the scale tool hold down and we're going to get the shear tool so i'm just going to click on that and actually double click on it and we're going to get a couple of settings over here so uh let's see i'm going to uh, just start increasing the shear angle make sure you have preview on so you can see the preview i'm going to just start increasing it all right so probably around uh, five is a good number so you get you see we get that nice slanted thing all right uh that's pretty good and uh, all right, uh, let's click on OK. And now we have this whole thing slanted, which looks really sporty. And the next one is we can go to object. Sorry, let's go back over here to, uh, sorry, let's uh, just close this up. Uh, choose uh, sh shear again, so double click on it. This time I want to set it to a vertical and uh, you know reduce the number. So make sure it's zero and then just give it a little bit of uh, slant. So probably two or three, I'm going to go with two and I click on OK. So this is our final text. And as you can see, it is in the dead center, which is pretty good. All right, I'm gonna press Control zero on my keyboard to fit the entire canvas to my screen. And uh, that makes it easier to look at. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna apply a gradient. So with the text, with the path selected, you wanna come over here and click on this gradient tool, which is gonna add in a gradient. 
Let's move this up right into the corner so we can see it. Uh, I'm gonna set this angle to negative 90, so it's coming from the top to bottom. And then we're gonna pick a couple of colors. Um, I am actually, don't know what the colors are, so I am going to just refer the same colors. And yeah, so the first one is white, of course, and the second one is uh, some sort of, let's double click on that. It's 01DBF5, so I'm just gonna copy that. And as you can see here, the stop is at 87%. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. All right, so this is gonna be pure white and this is going to be, double click on that. And oh, we should be able to paste it. Okay, so you can double click over here and then press Ctrl V and we have applied that color. Now it resets this uh, angle, which I don't know why it does, but I'm gonna set it to negative 90. And here we're gonna set, select the uh, gradient slider and we're gonna set that to 87%. So, uh, oh, we actually want it. We actually want it to be 90. So we have a little bit of uh, the blue part, and the rest becomes white. All right. Now you probably can't see anything like so. So quickly, I'm going to go ahead and get myself a rectangle using the rectangle tool. I'm just going to go ahead and create a rectangle like so, and then I'm going to click back over here so that it becomes a solid color, and I'm going to go ahead and change this to red. Okay. Now, uh, we wanna send it to the back, so you can hold down Control, Shift, and the left square bracket key, or you can right click and then choose Arrange and choose Send to Back. All right, this is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly lock this, so right click and then choose, uh, actually you can go ahead and uh, just lock this layer. All right, and uh, we can move on to this. Okay, so the next one is we're gonna add in this stroke. Um, so let's go ahead and Select this go to object. We're gonna go to path and then choose offset path Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on preview and uh, as you can see this is what we get now You want to go for a negative value because you want it to go inside So probably negative 10 as a number which I think looks pretty good in this case But this will depend based on the size of your artboard and composition and then just go ahead and click on okay So now let's see what we have. So we have basically one single path uh, with two parts inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control Shift G to ungroup. So now we have one over here and one over here, which is at the back, okay? So now you gotta, you gotta be a little bit careful about this, but it uh, shouldn't be a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, all the ones inside, all right? And But you can hold down Shift. So I've selected everything that's on the inside and I'm gonna press Control G. Right, and then we can go ahead and select the ones at the outside, which is this. Make sure you hold down Shift and select them carefully. All right, press Control G again, and now we're gonna apply a gradient. So with the gradient already selected, and if you wanna open up the gradient panel, you can come over here and double click on the gradient tool. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to 50, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to negative 90, so I reverse the colors, all right? So now we have uh, on the top is white, and at the bottom is this, uh, you know, nice blue color. Uh, let me quickly check the settings uh, so that, you know, we don't end up choosing something else. So yeah, so it's at 70, which is a fine, I guess. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's, that, that should be pr pretty good. So make sure you select these again and set this to 70. All right, yeah. Okay, and we can set this to negative 95. Uh, so it kind of slants uh, pretty much. Okay, uh, that's looking pretty decent. Okay, so the next thing is to do something really important, but you have to do it carefully. So the first thing you wanna do is select everything. Press Control G to group, all right? Just press Control G. And then you wanna make a copy by pressing Control C and Control F, all right? Control F pastes it in place. And then when we move up, you see as we have two copies. What I'm gonna do is I am going to Window and then I'm gonna choose Pathfinder. And here I'm gonna click on this button which says Unite and that's gonna make everything into one single path. So everything that was touching each other gets deleted and everything, it becomes one single set as you can see over here. But we also have this one at the bottom because but because we had not selected this, this has not been affected, only this has been affected. Just Control Z that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Object, Path, and then choose an Offset Path. This time, let's click on Preview again. Uh, let's go ahead and increase this to a bigger number. So it kind of takes up a lot of space. So maybe 25 would be a good number, or even 30 would be a pretty good number, but that's completely up to you. Even 40 would do the trick. 
Uh, that's uh, pretty cool. So I think I'm set with 40. So just go ahead and click on OK. Now without doing anything again, you want to go to Window and then choose Pathfinder and then you want to click on Unite and that makes it into a single thing. Now let's go ahead and give it a color. So this thing has a gradient. So uh, let's copy the gradient settings. Um, let's double click on that. So the first one, oops. So the first one is 02486E. Copy that. Let's come to our this one and uh, let's uh, double click on it. Whoops. Let's double click on this and oh, yeah. And paste 02486E. Pretty good. And the next one is uh, gonna be a darker, I think a lighter one. Yeah, it's a lighter one, which is 01657B. So copy that. And uh, you can come over here and uh, paste it over here. And this we can set this to be, you know, at 50%. Uh, I think something wrong went with this color. So let's just uh, quickly check that. Copy. And uh, paste. Yeah. Okay, so we can set this to uh, 95. Oh, sorry. Negative 95. So it kind of goes around all like that. And uh, that's looking pretty good. Now, uh, now, as you can see, this is in the front, so we want to send it to the back. So you can hold down Control, Shift, and the left square bracket key, or right click and choose Range and choose Send to Back. And uh, that's uh, pretty good, of course. Now, we're going to do a little bit of cleaning up because it looks uh, really bad at the moment. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to come over here and press P on my keyboard to get the pen tool. Uh, P is the pen tool. And I'm going to press the minus button. Uh, on the keyboard so I get the minus sign and I'm going to zoom in over here and then I'm just going to start deleting the extra anchor points that I don't want just keep on clicking on it basically what I'm looking for is a very straight line so we want to we want to delete this remove this all right okay we, we want to take off all these points uh, this is going to be a little tedious but uh, you know, this is the best way of doing it make sure, without making sure that uh, any mistakes. All right, okay. Yeah, when you come, if there is an S or a curved path in the end, you wanna make sure that uh, you don't cut off the last point that makes it perfect, which is uh, this. Yeah, I think pretty good. All righty, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna select it and make sure you select only the outer path. Oh, so as you can see, we have an issue. We have this, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control Shift G, so to make sure to ungroup, and then I'm gonna go ahead and delete uh, all these unnecessary ones. So these are the only things that I have, all right? So let's go back and then we can paste it and move it to the back. And yeah, looking much better. So I'm gonna select the one that we have on the back and I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this down slightly, not too much, because we wanna create space for some 3D-ness, okay? So what we wanna do is you wanna select the ones that are inside. Uh, actually, you can go ahead and select the entire thing, doesn't matter. Um, make a copy by pressing Control C and Control F. So, and then we can go to Window and then choose Pathfinder and Merge. So we have this one thing. So you wanna to move to the back, but before we do that, let's just quickly change the color. So I've got a color that I've added to that, and that is 03323A, copy that. And uh, we can come back and make this a solid color, double click and paste it. Ooh, looks cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know bring this down. So you can hold on shift on the keyboard and then press the arrow key once and you can see we have some 3Dness, but I want this to go to the back. So I'm gonna hold down Control, Shift, and the left square bracket key. It's gonna send it way to the back, and then just hold down Control and the right square bracket key to bring in up once, like so. So now, as you can see, we have some really nice, good-looking 3Dness, all right? Great. Now, if you want it to be perfect, you can actually go ahead and, you know, um, fix these up. So what I'm trying to say is you can press P on your keyboard. You can come, click, over here and you can click on this and then you can select these two. Make sure you have the Pathfinder again. Whoops, not the Navigator. The Pathfinder, we can actually go ahead and dock this over here and then you can merge that and then send it to the back, all right? So you can go ahead and tweak it up uh, as much as you want. So you can fix it up over here. But when you're doing that, make sure you can go to Window, sorry, View and then you have 
snap to pixel and snap to point. Make sure you have snap to point turned on. That is more important than snap to pixel. Uh, you can do the same thing over here. Uh, you can do the same thing over here and uh, same thing over here. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Great, so this is what we have. Um, we can actually go ahead and move this back up if we want. All right. Okay, so the things you want to do is you want to select this, make a copy again by pressing Control C, Control F. So we have this, and uh, this time we want to make it a bit darker. So let's make it black for now, and we can change that later. Whoops, uh, black. Okay, so you're gonna send this page at the back. So Control Shift and the left square bracket key, and now we're gonna bring this down like so. Uh, bring it one level up. So make this. So this is this matters on how much depth you want. So I'm probably want to go for this much of a depth, and then you can also move it to the left and right like so. And you can also go ahead and bring this back in if you want, uh, how much ever you want. And I think that is looking pretty good, All right? As you can see over here, uh, how much ever you want. And what we can do is compress P on your keyboard. We can click over here, over here. And uh, okay, then we can select these two and then merge them, send it to the back again. And uh, you have some nice 3Dness, pretty good. Uh, okay, so I've added a slight gradient to this. So, or you can add in a solid fill, that's completely up to you. Um, so let's open up the gradient settings for this. So I've got 012E46, copy that, come over here and let's add in a gradient to this. All right, uh, select this, double click here and then paste it. And uh, we have another one, which is a lighter one, which is um, 004747. So copy that and uh, come over here and uh, paste that. And we can set this to minus 96. So it's coming from top to bottom. All right, so one last step is to add in a final stroke which goes around the entire thing. So let's go ahead and select everything. Press Control G, so we have everything into one. Let's make a copy by pressing Control C and Control F. So we have two copies. We can go ahead and merge them into one. Let's go ahead and make this pure white. Alrighty. And then we wanna to go to object, path, and then choose an offset path. And this time we wanna go for a big number again, like 40. Click on OK, and then move this right to the back and one little front. Now you also have this part, you can just delete that and uh, you should be good to go. Maybe the stroke is too much, so let's actually Control Z that. Let's go to Object, Path, and then Offset Path, maybe 20 should be a good thing. Let's preview that, click on OK, there we go. You can delete this and move to the back. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much it. So if you want to clean this up, you can definitely go ahead. You can press P on your keyboard and then click over here. All right. Um, yeah, uh, you can do the same thing over here. All right. And uh, yes, so you, you, can, you can clear out all this to make it pretty straight and proper with perfect curves and uh, yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then take care and bye-bye.